So in this video, <coughs> I continue from the previous, and um, I'm going to just compare a little bit. I've changed uh, around some of the parameter values here to be consistent with the uh, Lysen-Rymer paper. So for instance, the parameter values that I have here are shared with here, and then um, this is Lysen-Rymer Espenhoog uh, VBA code, so I should write Lysen-Rymer here. And the output for the probability, which we use for backward recursion and the up and down, are also Lysen Rhymer. And this um, is basically um, uh, from Quinru Chang, who um, set out an array function, which, if I input it in stock uh, exercise time period, it would output in an array the Lysen Rhymer um, uh, value for the probability for up and for down. And again, that probability is the probability we use for um, implementing the backward recursion. And we go, when we go back into the actual, I refer to this as the manual tree, it's a Lysen Rhymer tree to be distinguished from the Cox Ross Rubinstein tree. This Lysen Rhymer tree has qualities that are different from Cox Ross Rubinstein. First of all, with, with Cox Ross Rubinstein, no matter how I change the values, if I take the product of up and down, it's always equal to one. So if I take the up value multiplied by the down value, um always equal to 1. So if I change this to 120 or if I change it to 130 or any of the parameter values, um, the up by the down remains the same. Okay, so that's something um, worth noting. Whereas with the Lysen Rhymer code, if I change again, this is the, if I take the product of the up the down equal to this up multiplied by the Lysen Rhymer down D. And um, when I change now again, it's approximately one here when the stock price is equal to the exercise for Lysen Rhymer. If I change, however, this to be 60, um, that changes fairly dramatically. So for a lower stock price, when the stock price is lower than the exercise, the up by the down goes to 1.06 if this is higher let's say 160 the stock price is higher then it becomes uh, the value is reducing and what we should note about the Lysen Rhymer uh, tree is that as we change the parameter inputs the area of the zeros the location of the zeros does do not change in other words the stock price will get to if we think of this 15 step tree uh, in the 15 step tree there are in the final uh, ultimate set of nodes uh, 16 uh, nodes and at the middle node the value will uh, be, will get close to 100 so 7 will be less than 100 and node 8 in that order in this 15 step tree will be higher than 100 again we can test that a little bit if I change the value, let's bring the tree over a little bit so we can compare maybe a little bit more directly what's going on here. Um, and this is the Lysen Rhymer tree, and this data set is based on the values here. Um, but if I change this to 150, okay, the again, the, the middle node at the end goes towards that area between 100. So node 8 will be at above 100, node 7 will be below 100. Again, if I change this back to 60, okay, the middle node will get close to the exercise, where the exercise in this instance is 100. If I change this to 60, you can see that the when I multiply P the the up by the down it's a close to one if we go back to 100 here it's the value 
uh, moves away from one and what's happening is the, the stock price will have to veer back towards the exercise so again between seven and eight here in this 15 step tree at node eight um, in the final um, array of the the tree the stock price will be a little bit above the exercise and node seven will be a little bit below if i change the stock exercise to be 100 again what we find here they the final node one will be above the other will be below okay another important feature of the license rhymer tree is the number of steps have to be odd okay so the num in order to engineer that particular outcome we need the number of steps in the tree to be uh, odd not even um, or if we put in an even set that it'll um, produce uh, an odd number for the tree to be processed Okay, so we'll put that back here for a moment. Also note as well, as we, the position of the zero, so this is a call option, and this is the value of the American option. And again, when we change, if I change this to 150, the area of the zeros is not changing. Whereas for a Cox Ross Rubenstein tree, if I change um, the stock price, which is driving this, the stock price is here and and then the value the options here if i change this to let's say 120 um the <coughs> area to zeros is reduced if i change it to 150 and the area to zeros again is reduced so it's a dynamic type uh, setup in terms of the the zeros right if i put the stock price back to 100 Okay, we're back to where we started. This area of the zeros is here. If I put it to um, 60, the area of the zeros grows. Okay, now that's not something that we observe with the Lysen Rhymer tree. With the Lysen Rhymer tree, it's always the same area here that contains the zeros for the for the call option and for the put. For the put option, the zeros would be above. For the call option, the zeros are below the exercise. So if we change this back to 100, there will be no effect here. The value of the tree will change, okay? Um, but the area of the zeros will remain unchanged. Again, that's a particular feature associated with license Rhymer. Okay, so in estimating the um, the license rhymer tree, I have an American option here, an American call option. So it's a first of all a 15 step tree, 15 step license rhymer tree. I have a valuation done for both American option and European option. In the uh, set of values that I have here for um, the stock price, the exercise, the time period, and so on. Um, the dividend is zero. So B, the cost of carry is the same as the interest rate, which implies the dividend is zero. That would also imply that the value of the American call and European call should be exactly the same. Uh, for the American call, um, when once we generate the stock price, the stock prices in the tree, which is basically, if we take each of the stock prices, we multiply by down, going down, and multiply by u if we're going up okay and again we multiply by d going down and we multiply by um u for going up so uh, the way i generated this tree was i took the stock price and i multiplied by d and then i went up one and i multiplied by d for each of these so each of these have been multiplied by d in other words um, to compare, I go from here, multiply each of these nodes by the down, and then multiply this one by up to come here, and then to get each of these brown, orangey ones, I go down. And keep in mind that this set of nodes in the tree correspond with these values here. So I'm literally going down. Again, when I go from this node to this node, 
<clears throat> I'm going up. I'm multiplying by the up value. And then um, for the rest of those nodes, I'm multiplying by D. So again, D is being multiplied D from the Lysenreimer array, output array. All of these values are being multiplied by by D. Okay, multiplied by D. Okay, so what can we observe here in terms of the tree? Well, what we can observe is that the with these parameter inputs, okay, which are largely the same as the ones we have for uh, the Lysenreimer uh, table one. The only difference here is I don't have twenty. I have twenty-five steps here. I don't have twenty-five steps. I just have fifteen. Okay, so for um, an American call option, which is the same as a European, the value that I should get is 10, 13, 16. Okay, uh, with 25 steps. With 15 steps, I'm getting, using um, Espen Ho code, uh, 10, 13, 21, 10, 13, 21. So the American option is the same as the European option. Because dividend is zero, in other words, um, the cost to carry are negative Q. So if Q is zero, 7% uh, minus zero would yield the cost of carry B. So B is equal to R negative Q. If the interest is seven and Q is zero, B must be equal to zero, 0 0.07. With a 0% dividend, the American option and the European option should be the same. Okay, so that's one initial result we verified the American and European option are equal here um, because there's no dividend yield and no incentive to exercise early. The second thing is we can verify that that result for the Lyson Reimer code, Espen Hoke Lyson Reimer VBA code, the result here for, that I have for the American option is also the same that I'm obtaining here. So this 10, 13, 21 is the same as the 10, 13, 21 here. So the manual tree, which I've estimated here in terms of taking the original stock price tree, so S minus X, where X is the exercise, and keep going down. And then the uh, backward recursion involves taking the maximum of S contemporaneous s minus the exercise and then taking p p multiplied by the value the option if it goes up stock price goes up plus one minus p one minus p by the value the option if it goes down and again if i remove these cells here they can be easily regenerated by pulling dragging that cell down because the cell referencing is remains the same. Okay, and the value then that we have for the American option is equivalent here to our output here for the American option. Just to test that in terms of our C++ code, if I go back into to, um, C++ code here for the static model, and put in 15 steps, same parameter values. If I run that code, I get 10, 13, 21. Okay, so that result here that I obtained in the C++ code is the same as what I've obtained here in terms of the tree. I can just paste in the result and change the font color to black. And again, the 13 is a bit small. But the 10, 13, 21 um, is the same result that I'm obtaining here as well. Okay, so in a sense, this is another test of robustness that the static model, which we verified, produces the same result as the dynamic models, um, is yielding us, us here 10, 13, 21. And for our small scale model that we've worked out, manually worked out, we're getting the same 1321 uh, as well. In the next video, I'll, we'll look at uh, under what circumstances will the value of the European and American option uh, differ and what is the impact of changing the uh, dividend 
here in the model.